he's having a conversation with um, with Angel Reese, and a camera cuts to him, and the conversation he's having, he very clearly seems to mouth the words, I don't think Bronny is a pro. Bronny James airballs that three. He's now 0 for 13. Pardon me, 0 for 14 from three. You're not my son. What's the truth? You're not my son. You never have been. You're no... You're no orphan. I don't even know who you are because you have none of me in you. You're someone else's. It tore me apart. Which is the ball. There is a buzz in this arena. What a start for Bronny. Bronny's got it. Two more. Isolated against Gay. Finger roll rolls in. As well as a television audience. Wake your bitch ass up, Lucky Charms. This, this video age hater. like milk. You're this video, hater. video age hater. like milk. How? When the milk in my refrigerator doesn't expire until July 31st. <sighs> Look at them all. What hole are these pests crawling out of? It's too much. They want me tarred and feathered. Codename Fungi. Activate accountability blocker at once. What it do, baby? Augmented contingency emergency response activated. And it's just basketball. At the end of the day, it's just basketball. In all seriousness, do I want Bronny to fail? Hell no. Am I happy about him playing better? Hell yes. He's doing better right now than the number two pick in the NBA draft who is quite literally playing like number two. Watch this. Watch this right here. Pass the ball. He's got four jerseys on him and still insists on jacking up a horseshoe. Three other teammates open. This guy should have shot that. What you scared for? Don't pass it to him. Oh my God. Look at this. Multiple teammates open again. Let me do a turnaround contested one arm shot. I got it. I got it. The ball got gravel in it. Only explanation. He went from zero to two points. And he seems pleased with himself in the thumbnail. So that's something. Golf clap. Golf clap. In the Hawks game, Bronny ended the night 5 of 11 shooting from the field, 12 points scored. And against the Cavaliers, he was 5 of 10 from the field, scoring 13 points, had 5 rebounds, 3 assists, and 2 blocks. So he's far more efficient these two games than he was in the first three of Summer League. We saw him show far more hustle on defense, getting back in transition far quicker than he was in those previous games. And he also showcased the court vision that many people have said great things about and just his ability to see the floor. So he's really come alive. The crowd is loving it. They've been rooting for him since the second he even stepped foot onto the court for Summer League. And he seems to be getting more and more comfortable each game. However, these are Bronny's current stats. Still not good stats. I'm not going to just pretend everything is great. Everything is far better than it's been up until this point. But I'm also not going to run away from anything that I've previously said based upon Bronny's performance. And I don't think anyone should within reason. People who talked about his play and his play alone and criticized it, it needed to be criticized. It was bad. But due to two solid games, I don't think it would be fair to ignore everything that happened and preceded it. That'd be revisionist history. If we're keeping it a bean, as the kids would say, does everything I've said up until this point look bad? Does it look wrong? Is it wrong? In the moment, yes, it does. In a similar fashion to how Kobe Bryant described the sentiments of making a game-winning shot as opposed to missing. If you miss, everybody hates you. If you make it, everybody loves you. Rinse and repeat, cycle continues. But you know something? I'm always going to be comfortable and satisfied with being wrong about something negative than positive. As everyone should, to be honest with you. Who wants to be right about negative things all the time? Just look at my track record. I was wrong about this, wrong about that. Skip that for now. That's the beauty of sports. That's what makes this fun. That's what makes this interesting. 
Summer League is still going on. Bronny could have multiple good games after this and make everything I've said age worse and worse. Or he could have bad games and make everything that I've said before age better than this very video. But one thing that won't change is the fact that LeBron is responsible for a lot of the influx of negativity that's come about to Bronny. If he had simply just not said anything at all in the way of hyping him up to be better than current players in the league, as well as saying a bunch of other things to what I guess to his understanding was to Bronny's benefit, but it's been to his detriment, you wouldn't get this media circus around it. As I've stated before, most of the problems LeBron has ever had have been the direct result of his own doing. And if you think what I'm saying isn't true, he wouldn't have deleted this tweet. He or his publicist realized, hey, you're kind of doing the very thing you're telling others to stop doing. You and others like you are putting undue pressure on him. Nobody is putting pressure on him that LeBron himself hasn't already done. LeBron is simply doing what LeVar Ball did to Lonzo, but a passive aggressive version. You were on record talking about put your son on the Golden State Warriors. Yes. And put Steph Curry on UCLA. Yes. And your son would be, explain how right your son now. would be better. Right, right now. now. Right now. Right now. now. UCLA is. wouldn't be where they at. And these very same people who are overly delusional LeBron fans who are by consequence and relation, also fans of Bronny, seem to forget or ignore he experienced a medical emergency and a cardiac arrest, yet have no problem with him going to the NBA as soon as possible. Bonnie James has not produced like a one and done player this season. He's averaging five and a half points per game, shooting under 40% from the field for a USC team that has the worst record in the Pac-12. That's not one and done caliber. He's been playing hot potato with his teammates, moving the ball left and right, really has lacked assertiveness and is missing opportunities to really put himself into the game when they've had injuries and they've needed him to step up and show that he's an NBA player. That guy's such a hater. I bet his favorite drink is Haterade. He gets drunk on it. Now he said what he said about Bronny and nobody who knows ball would argue that. But if come time a year from now, Bronny becomes most improved player or he gets some other accolade and he becomes a legitimate starter in the NBA, that take is going to age bad. Everybody who said anything bad during this time period is not going to look too good. But would it be fair to label everyone as haters who said anything negative ever? I don't think that's fair at all. They made statements tailored around observations of the time. Of the time, they were right. Now they're wrong. It's like somebody walking around people all day at work with breath smelling like the back of Satan's neck. They go throw some Tic Tacs in their mouth and say, what are you talking about? My breath stinks. No, it doesn't. Like you weren't burning people's nose hairs all shift long. A good amount of the scrutiny Bronny got, I believe is somewhat fair for the most part in considering just how much hype LeBron has given him and the media takes what LeBron says and applies the same energy to whatever it is he's talking about. Bronny is essentially being reported on and talked about as if he's a top five draft pick. He's getting top five draft pick scrutiny and criticism. Now multiply it by 10 because he's LeBron's son. Just because LeBron is his father, which that's going to be something that you can't do anything about. But add in LeBron's words onto that in the theatrics and antics, it makes something that was already maybe somewhat annoying, somewhat unfair, 10 times worse. And then when you add in the fact that second round picks don't get guaranteed deals and Bronny has a guaranteed deal of almost $8 million, the second you aren't playing to snuff, people are going to criticize you. You can't get all these advantages and luxuries and none of the criticism that comes along with it, especially when you are a second round pick. But I'm not going to demonize him or his character for things that's simply out of his control and it's circumstantial. But I'm also never going to not give credit where credit is due. And if a player defies expectations or changes a narrative, I'm going to celebrate that. The same applies to these three stooges. If they do anything to the opposite of what I've been saying about them for months, basically a year, I'm going to come out and say I was wrong. It will be extremely painful. But I'll still do it. And not because I was wrong, but because it's right. It's simply the good thing to do. Who wants bad things to happen to players anyway?
I had a different title in mind for this video, but now that I've reached the end, I'm going to have to call it something different. In closing, I'm happy Bronny is doing better. Seeing him improve these last two games has been fun to watch. But I'm not going to just sit here and pretend that everything is super. I've said previously whether the Lakers season turns out good or bad, I see it as potential cinema. Because I don't think one can deny how intriguing it is that this man LeBron is literally creating his own teammates. I mean, how often have you heard an NBA player say he babied another and it's actually true?